So in this example, we're going to see what it means to compute probability using the empirical method. So empirical method for computing probability is being used when outcomes of the probability experiment are not equally likely. So let's read this example. In this example, uh, they're talking about this game that's called Pass the Pigs. And in this game, um, pigs are used as dice. Points are earned based on the way the pig lands. And right here, there, it shows kind of like the rules of the game where depending on which side pig lands, you, um, you get different number of points. So there are six possible outcomes when one pig is tossed. But apparently it's much harder to toss the pig this, um, in such a way that it lands in, a certain, in this position. And that's why you get um, so many points. So, um, a class of 52 students rolled pigs 3,939 times. That was a fun class, right? They were just, looks like, tossing pigs all class long. The number of times each outcome occurred is recorded in the table at right. So according to this table, pig landed on the side with no doubt 1,344 times and pig landed in the position that's called snouter. So I think it has to land on a snout um, only 137 times. So um, let's try to answer the first part of this. Question. It says, use the results of the experiment to build a probability model for the way the pigs land. Now, what is the probability model? It says here, probability model lists the possible outcomes of a probability experiment and each outcome's probability. So here we have another table. That's the one we're going to use for constructing probability model. Um, these are all possible outcomes, right? These are six different positions in which pig can land, and we want to calculate pro um, corresponding probabilities. Once again, in this situation, the outcomes, those outcomes are not equally likely. Some outcomes are more likely, so it's kind of like easier for the pig to land on the side with no dot rather than um, compared to the snout. So how do we calculate probabilities in this case? Well, that's where we have to use the empirical method. And according to the empirical method, probability is the same or approximately the same as the relative frequency of outcomes. But how do we calculate the relative frequency? Well, it's the same as proportion, right? So in other words, we have to take the number of time the outcome specific or certain out outcome is observed and divide by the number of repetitions of the experiment or, uh, in other words, the total number of outcomes. So the way we're going to calculate probability is that we're going to literally calculate relative frequencies for those outcomes. Um, that means that we need to have total. So I'll put it here. Um, well, actually total we know, right? We don't even need to add that because it was given here. We know that students rolled pigs 3,939 times. So that should be the total. And we can always double check if we add up those numbers, we should get 3,939. Okay, so how do we calculate probability for for a pig landing on the side with no dot. So relative frequency is found by taking the number of times this outcome was observed, which is 1,344 times. And that has to be divided by the number of repetitions of the experiment. So that experiment was repeated 3,939 times. Exactly the same way how we calculate proportion part divided by the total. And if we perform that division and round decimal to three places or to the thousands, then we're going to get 0 0.341. 3, 0.341. Okay. So for calculating probability for this, for pig landing on the side with dot, we have to take number of times this outcome was observed. And that is, according to the table, 1,294 times. And divide by the total number of all outcomes or number of repetitions. That decimal would be 0 0.329.
and I think you got the idea, right? So um, I'm going to write down the results for the rest or probability for the rest of the outcomes. I have them calculated 0 0.195, 0 0.093, and it would be a good exercise to double check those, uh, those numbers. Yeah, 0.008. Now, before we move on, let's let's think or ask one extra question here. What happens when I add all those decimals together or all those probabilities from probability model? What number should we get? Well, we should get one. Let's check that. So it's good that I checked because I found a typo. So I didn't copy that number correctly. That's 3.321. 0.329. So the total that we get here is 1.001. And um, yes, it's not exactly one, but it's okay to get just slightly above one or slightly below one because I just a little error happened here due to the rounding that we do that we did. But yeah, every time when we add probability for all possible outcomes of a probability experiment, we should get one. And um, it, it also should make sense because we know that probability is defined as the relative fre frequency or proportion, right, which has exactly the same property. Okay, so that's how we answer question A. Now, moving to question B. It says, estimate and interpret the probability that a thrown pig lands on the side with dog. Well, that probability we already calculated, right? It's right here in this probability model. So side with the dot, right here. So probability of that event happening is 0 0.341, and it's based on the collected data. It's based on the experiment that was run um, 3,939 times, and um, relative frequency was used to estimate probability. So probability, I'll use notation here, probability that big lens on the side with dot, I'll say side with dot is 0.329 and that's where I'm getting this number from, right? Now that's the same as approximately 32 0.9%, let me say 33% chance. So when you throw a pig, uh, it's 33% chance that it's going to land on the side with a dot. But how can we interpret this number percentage or how can we interpret, let's use actually decimal, interpret this? Well, we can interpret this way. If we throw a pig 1,000 times, and I'm using 1,000 because my decimals round to the thousandth place. If I round it to 100 place, I would probably use 100. Um, so, if the if we throw a pig 1,000 times, we should expect that it lands on the side with a dot approximately how many times? 329 times. And that's the way to interpret the result. So here I have that interpretation written. And then finally, let's read a definition about what we call unusual event. So when we say unusual event, um, you know, intuitively we can say that it's probably when chance of that event occurring, occurring is very small, right? But how can we be more precise? Well, um, sometimes, and it's, it's common um, in many textbooks um, and other resources, uh, so sometimes people use the cutoff of 0 0.05. So that is, they consider any event whose probability is less than that, less than 0 0.05, to be unusual. But again, it's only in some resources, well, in a lot of resources, but this is not the universal definition. Um, however, we will go off um, this number and we'll answer this question now. Would it be unusual to throw a leaning jowler? So let's try to think about it. Now, a leaning jowler, um, that's a you know, specific outcome. Um, and what do we know about its probability? Its probability is 
0.008. So in other words, to decide if it's unusual or not, we're going to take its probability right here and we'll need to compare it with 0.05. If it's less than 0.05, then it's unusual. If it's not, if it's greater, then it's not unusual. So, but what is this number? Is it less or, or it's greater? Well, it's actually less, right? 0.008 is less than 0.05. So then we're going to say yes. Yes, it is unusual uh, because probability of leaning jowler is 0.008, which is less, I'm, I'm going to use mathematical symbol for less, less than 0.05. Remember, that stands for less. Okay, um, and that's the reason. Now, if we're given probability, let's say, in terms of percentage, so what percent would it be? It's a point, move decimal point two places, right? So it's 0.8%. Then we need also to view uh, 0 0.05 in terms of percent. So, and that is 5%. So in other words, we can kind of like re redefine this definition. So we can say that um, any band whose probability is less than 5%, right here, less than 0 0.05 or less than 5%, um, that, that band is called unusual. Okay, so that's how we look at it.